Good evening. This is our evening prayer, uh, night prayer even, you could call it. So I've lit a candle, if you can see in there at the very bottom. I'm in a different place because my daughter has taken over the basement. So here I am in the Scandinavian room. A little cluttered, but, but here we go. Uh, so we begin with our candle lighting. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Gather us, O God, around the cross of Christ, and make it for us the tree of life. May the fruits of this tree feed the hungry, and may its leaves heal the nations. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like leaves trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. And so, holy God, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in your loving wisdom you set us beside the fountain of life, like a tree planted by running streams. Fill us with delight in your teaching, that we may bear fruit in every season of life. Through Jesus Christ, our leader and Savior. Amen. Our reading is from Ezekiel 17. The Lord God proclaims, I myself will take one of the top branches from the tall cedar. I will pluck a tender shoot from its crown, and I myself will plant it on a very high and lofty mountain. On Israel's mountainous hillsides, I will plant it, and it will send out branches and bear fruit. It will grow into a mighty cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it and find shelter in the shade of its boughs. Then all the trees in the countryside will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and raise up the lowly tree and make the green tree wither and the dry tree bloom. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. And so what might we think of seeing the images of our universe being taken by the Webb Telescope? Now, strangely enough, as I wrote that sentence and these thoughts about Exploring the universe, last night the moon was so um, vibrant in the sky, and when I got to the church for choir, uh, I turned back the other way, and there were the planets. I think it's Jupiter and Venus right now that are in the sky. Anyway, obviously I'm not doing this at nighttime, but uh, go out tonight and see if you can see those phenomena. So we had thought that, you know, Hubble's pictures from outer space of the universe were wondrous to behold. Plus, we've been shown the surfaces of our neighboring planets and will return to the moon. We may well visit Mars before my time on this earth is over. It's been said of our exploration of the universe that the more we learn, the more questions there are. Similarly, we can view the smallest things that make up matter and it boggles the mind. Now, lest you think that such knowledge would turn us away from religion, Go and meet my father-in-law, an amazing physicist and faithful active churchgoer who raised a family with a deep, lasting faith. As excited as I am about the discoveries of science, I, it is another matter altogether to study the ways of God, what we call theology. Take a simple question that someone asked Jesus in the Gospels. Then who can be saved? For people in Jesus' time had thought, and, and most think it today, that those who have had abundant success in life were also in line to make that heavenly trip. But Jesus saw that wealth was a barrier to a right relationship with God as, as well as with one's neighbors. Even his disciples tried to figure out their place in all this. But Jesus had to answer with a mystery. What we humans think impossible is always possible with God. We think that we have a choice in matters of salvation. That's an argument to be made. As we'd heard in the pronouncements of Moses and Joshua, love and serve God above all, choose life over death. Paul responds in I'm Paul responds to that question with 
I may have the will to do God's will, but my flesh, my body, my, my human nature, what have you, uh, fight against my mind and the spirit so that I won't do what I want to do or what I should be doing. But, as you can well guess, God has made a choice for us who are called the elect, the chosen of God. Despite ourselves, we trust that God's way is always the righteous one. God's ways are a mystery, we heard. Thus says the Lord, I bring down the tall tree and raise up the lowly tree. God's choices in the Hebrew Bible as to who receives the heritage of a rich land and life rarely seem to follow a straight path in that history of God's people. Jacob, the younger brother, was a schemer who got what he wanted, though God seemed to approve. David was the youngest of the brothers, but he became the new king. Then Solomon, his mother's favorite, won out over David's other sons. Mary, not a royal princess, gave birth to one who would cast down the mighty from their thrones and lift up the lowly, who would scatter the proud, give good things to the hungry, and send the rich away empty. In any of these choices of these people, it appears that God wills it to turn the world upside down. This is good news for many, but not so the proud and powerful. Look at the acorn. You can't yet see the mighty oak inside it. Trees, <clears throat> excuse me, trees have a way of surprising us, like the tall sequoia, which is able to resist a common wildfire. A forest ranger will thin out the thick foli foliage to bring to life those other trees that were awaiting their turn in the undergrowth. God does the same when planting us where we need to be in order to thrive and pursue our hopes and dreams. Do we worry that the, gen that the generations of this body of believers are fading or falling away? God's ways, through this time of expansive change and deepening troubles, are still very much capable of making something new and more fit for the times we are in. And so, what can we do but echo Mary's song? The Mighty One has done great things for us. God will have mercy on every generation. That is all we can ever hope for, the never-failing providence of a God who is love. Amen. We continue with the litany. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for, a, excuse me, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth and Bill, our bishops, and all servants of the church, for this assembly and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints. We commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord, we pray. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have pr graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. On our hearts and on our houses, the blessing of God. In our coming and going, the peace of God. In our life and our believing, the love of God. At our end and our beginning, the arms of God to welcome us, bring us home. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please wish each other peace as uh, uh, with those who are with you at home or uh, online here with Facebook. And have a good evening. And I have to run. <laughs>